1% of the population will require blood transfusion at some point in their lives. And similarly, for many pregnant women, availability and accessibility of this precious commodity can mean literally the difference between life and death. My name is Dr. Masi Korir, and on this episode of Health Digest, Gloria Milimu visited Kiambu County and brings you the stories of how expectant fathers are making a difference by taking part in a simple process of donating blood and what this blood means in keeping their spouses alive and other people in the hospital in need of blood. From a distance, it may pass for any other antenatal class. But what is striking about this particular session at Mary Help of the Sikh Mission Hospital in Tika Kiambu County is the motivation behind today's attendance. Unlike before, when only pregnant women would show up for such sessions, the exercise now attracts even the expectant fathers, a move that has become synonymous with antenatal visits across all hospitals in this first county. Their aim? To promote a better outcome during the delivery of their bundles of joy. Previously, uh, we used to have men who are not coming for the, for the sessions. Uh, they felt it is a women business, no? In fact, the biggest, you, 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 we know the biggest joke that uh, people will tell you, Wacha Kunuliza Maswad is a clinic. You know, that, that's what most people will, will say. But these days is not, the, is not the same. Actually, men will come to the clinic, like you saw in our antenatal, they will come to the clinic and they will sit. And after the sessions are over, because we'll have sessions every morning, they just go out. So, now, when, you inform, when you're telling a patient about this story, about the blood donations, the, the husband has had from the midwife, from the hospital, it's not something new. So we, are, we will get compliance. John Kibe, a father of two, who is also expecting his third baby, is among the expectant fathers who showed up for today's class. Ordinarily, he would be tending to his flock back in church where he serves as a man of the cloth. However, he now takes the front row seat in advocating for blood donation for expectant women. And um, I always follow my wife uh, whenever she is going to the hospital in case there is a need of blood. So what I have done and I've been doing is donating blood before because she might be in need. She is in the third pregnancy, and the first one was um, a CS, the second one was a CS, and also this one I expect it to be CS. So I have donated blood. I'm raising other relatives to raise uh, an amount of blood purposely for her because I might not know how much she may need, especially this third child. Just a few kilometers from the facility is Tika Level 5 Hospital, where expectant fathers also throng to donate blood with the aim of saving a life. Here, we meet Kelvin Thiongo, who will be a first-time dad. He is here to donate the life-saving commodity for his wife, who is scheduled for a cesarean section. I came to visit Tika Level 5 Hospital today to donate blood. I've been doing it uh, regularly. And um, this time around, I've been donating for some friends and uh, some close friends of mine and relatives. But today I came purposely to donate for my wife. It's uh, expecting surgery in maybe on Thursday, that's the EV. So, nimekuja kumtolea damu so that maybe, or maybe we can have a successful surgery that time. They, we donate up front so that on the day of the surgical, the medic team don't have to go around looking for blood. Even though he is a regular blood donor, donating blood for his wife, he sees, is a noble gesture and a sign of gratitude for carrying her pregnancy to term, despite the challenges that come with pregnancy, especially for any first-time mother. 
I would say maybe it's uh, voluntary from deep in because at the end of the day the spouse has maybe carried the baby for nine months so it is the least I can do for my spouse I would say. Here at Thika Level 5 Hospital where he will be welcoming his baby, the average number of deliveries conducted per month is between 800 and 900 with the highest ever number to be recorded said to be 947 baths. Naomi Mutiso, the hospital's maternity in charge, reveals that some of the babies are delivered through cesarean section, which demands availability of blood. So among the 947, we have a cesarean section, which is around 250 per month. Yeah, that is per month. 947 per month, around 250 uh, cesarean sections. Yes. And among uh, those deliveries, uh, like last month, we had five patients who received transfusion while in theatre. In the month of January, the year 2022, we had uh, five patients who were transfused in theatre and 11 who were transfused uh, post-delivery and we had like five who were transfused before, before delivery. That is antenatal mothers. The leading cause of maternal mortality is bleeding just before or after childbirth. And experts say availability of adequate and safe blood is key in preventing these mortalities. Health experts say obstetric hemorrhage, which accounts for 34% of all maternal deaths in Kenya, is the most commonly documented cause of maternal death. When uh, a woman delivers, you expect anything. Sometimes they bleed a lot and they need a lot of blood. So when there was no blood, you could look for blood, and uh, uh, sometimes you even miss blood. So, you know, when you don't give a blood to a patient who needs blood, obviously you might lose the patient, or if you don't lose them, their condition is, will not be the same. The facility has had its fair share of shortage of blood in the recent past, but through different strategies to improve its availability, like the use of expectant fathers and family members to donate blood for women, it has sufficient supplies in its blood bank. It was terrible. I can say it was terrible. We could look for blood even from as far as Embu, from Kenyatta, from other facilities, even Machakos. But uh, these days we are not looking for blood. That strategy has really helped us a lot because uh, we get spillovers. Like if you, if you prepare a mother in anticipation and uh, for example you have an antenatal mother who has uh, a low HB, if you transfuse them before labor, they're unlikely to need even the extra units of blood that the relatives are donated. And that way we get a fringe benefit of getting extra blood for which we are able to access for the other patients in the hospital. Because once blood is donated, it can be given back and neither is it sold off to anyone. So it's available for use by other patients. For expectant mothers diagnosed with anemia like Stella Wamugo, transfusion is often recommended to boost their hemoglobin level. So far, Wamugo, who is expecting a fourth child, has received three pints of blood. Nripo aenda clinic uko kwetu, wali nipima. Waka sema, damu yagu iko chini. Sasa waka nirifaro hapa, na ilikuwa agent. Sasa kufika hapa, nilieda scan. Toka scan, nika kuja huku kwa daktari. Haka ni admit, juu ilikuwa 5.6. Nilistuka sana juu, sikuwa na juu hali yagu iko ifo. The hospital's blood consumption is approximately 20 units per day, which is distributed across various departments with maternity having the largest share. So the main consumers of uh, blood in the facility, number one is maternity. Uh, usually the peripartum complications, their mother is coming in to deliver, uh, they will bleed after delivery or they will bleed before the, the delivery. And so maternity is actually our number one consumer of blood. Then the, the second uh, department that consumes a lot of blood at the, is the surgical department because the surgical department gets emergencies, the people who come in from road accidents, road traffic accidents and other related accidents uh, like, like the time we had uh, a collapse of a building around and uh, we get injuries who actually need 
blood transfusion. So our biggest consumers are actually number one, maternity, and then the casualty, the emergency surgical cases that we receive. And then also we also get a lot of sick uh, patients. We have sick children who need tr uh, blood transfusion. We have sick adults who are admitted in the ward who need blood transfusion. We have now the, the cancer cases that we're talking about who come in for uh, tr uh, transfusion top-ups before they go to get their chemotherapy. So blood, the demand for blood in this hospital is quite huge and uh, uh, because of that we needed interventions to be able to make sure that it's a commodity that is readily available because it has no substitute. When you need blood, it's blood you need. The maternity department at Mary Help of the Sick Mission Hospital, which is the second largest in the county in terms of deliveries, accounting for 176 deliveries per day, is also its biggest consumer of blood, as explained by Esther Wanjera, the hospital's senior nursing officer. So out of uh, the number of deliveries that we have, in a week we, 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 we transfuse like three patients like three patients requiring one, one unit of blood to about three per patient. So our requirement is about three to five units of blood per week for the maternity patients. For the medical patients, okay, the same, about, about the same consumption. And uh, also for patients who are going through chemotherapy, radiotherapy, they will come here. Some of them come here for blood transfusion, with the fact that knowing that most of the times we will not miss blood. Like uh, recently we had a patient who we were giving blood, like every, every other two weeks he would come for six units of blood. He had leukemia, so far he's doing well, and we were able to provide that blood. Yeah. So our consumption per week, we normally estimate ourselves to about 10 to 15 units of blood. Blood is a human-derived medical product and there is no pharmaceutical replacement for it. It is used as a life-saving solution in life-threatening or emergency situations. Every 10 minutes, someone in Kenya needs blood and is at the risk of dying if it's not available. The surplus donated from these initiatives goes a long way in catering for the blood needs of other patients. Francis Jaramba, a patient from the neighboring Muranga County, is among hundreds of patients who travel to Kiambu County for the commodity. His blood transfusion dependence began early last year when he was diagnosed with anemia. <laughs> Kufika hapa nakawi kimoja. Siku sita saba hivi. Yo siku sita saba ikiisha nasikia mwili imeregea sana. Haina nguvu. Mina narudi kwa hospitali tena. Kwa kupimwa hida wanaita B... Naita B... HB... Ya... Wakipima wanakuta niko na kama tatu, three point. Kutoka po wanaanza kuniweka. Nawekwa kama pointi sita tena. Inafika nane matisa. Nambuwa niende nyumbani. Like any other patient who regularly required transfusion up until November last year, when his hemoglobin level improved, he had exhausted all his avenues of blood donors. Sasa, unajua na au kitolewa saa hii, wezi tolewa mwesi hii ngini, baka unakaa miezi tatu hivi. Na mi damu ilikuwa inaisa haraka, 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 kabla wala watu damu yao haija rudi diyo wakuja kutolewa tena. Dio sasa tuka tafuta watu sasa papari popote tuge tuge pata damu tunaona ni mungu. Tunapata saagine watu wawiri. Baka hapo mire hapu ikaingiria ikasema wacha kuanga ikatena. Generally, Kiambu County's blood consumption is high due to its population of about 2.8 million people and the number of emergency cases its hospitals handle from road accidents. 
Okay, in Kiabu, we normally consume around 200 units per week. That rounds out to between 1,000 and 1,200 per month. And most of the consumption go to our maternity wards, the chemotherapy, theater cases. According to the World Health Organization, for Kenya to claim blood sufficiency, it needs about 1% of the 50 million people to donate blood at least once in a year. Over the last um, one year in 2021, we moved from a banking capacity of about 24,000 units to a banking capacity of currently 50,000 units. And we are definitely expanding again in this, in this year. In a bid to increase supply of blood in the counties, the Kenya National Blood Transfusion Service, KNBTS, in conjunction with county governments, have set targets based on minimum requirements for each county. Blood has a 35-day shelf life, meaning it, it can only be used within 35 days if it's fresh blood. If there are components, then different components can be used, have different shelf lives. But you do find, for instance, some components have a very short shelf life. Uh, fresh platelets, uh, 24 hours, uh, processed platelets, uh, about five days. You have um, other components, like if you freeze plasma when it is fresh, you can actually freeze it and then freeze it uh, at very low temperatures. You can keep it for a year. So there, there are different components. But if you're using fresh blood, you have 35 days. So even if you donated yesterday, after that 35 days, that blood cannot be used. So we can't keep it in a fridge and say, all of you Kenyans come one day and donate. We need everybody to keep donating. In a plan to increase blood collection sites within the counties, county governments will be required to handle the human resource requirements for the sites and also the day-to-day -day management of the transfusion services. Our role is going to be obviously uh, part doing the assessments, um, providing the equipment uh, to start because then we have specifications. We have also developed a standard for specifications for plant and equipment to be used in blood services. But also being able to um, provide the technical support for capacity building and providing oversight, which is we'll be doing quality assurance audits, we'll be doing hemovigilance uh, support. In 2021, a total of 297,000 units of blood was collected this being the highest ever amount of blood to be collected in the country after 187,000 units that was collected in 2014. The biggest issue was turnaround time, which is the time between when blood is collected and when it is tested and delivered, results delivered for that blood for its safety. We call that the turnaround time. And uh, this was an issue before with very high turnaround times. And we determined that our target should be a turnaround time of 24 hours at maximum, regardless of where the samples of the blood is collected in the Republic of Kenya. Over the years, Ken BTS, whose mandate is to collect, test, process and distribute blood and blood products to all transfusing hospitals has been faced with allegations of siphoning blood donated by Kenyans. We are leveraging technology and uh, for us technology is uh, we have developed a blood management information system and the blood management information system is now referred to as DAMUKE. So in the same way you normally see you know, Chanjo by MOH, you'll be seeing Damu KE by MOH. This blood management information system is a vein-to-vein -vein system. It helps us be able to track every single unit the moment it is donated. That, uh, you know, number or code for that bag is entered into the system. And when it is entered into the system, then it is uh, tracked throughout uh, it is and it is tracked at the lab uh, it is connecting the labs it is tracked at a, uh, down to the transfusion sites we have developed a module where you can register yourself as, as a donor we will be reminding you you will get your results as QR coded results and I am happy to announce that the 
self-registration module is now live. There is no doubt that doubling efforts in order to improve availability and access to safe blood and blood components from blood donors will be a key component in promoting comprehensive care for mothers. After all, safe blood should wait for the patient who needs it and not the other way around. Gloria Milemo, KTN News.